Jesus for being our Savior and for bringing us, redeeming us so we will understand who we are called to be. In your name, amen. amen. So today we're going to look at the Creator's design, man created male and female.
Humanity is given authority over all the creatures, over all that's, that God has made, to rule them first. Second, we're created in God's image. So, we're a creature like the animals, but we're unique. Um, we're in a whole different category than animals. And um, for those people that are strong animal lovers, they need to understand that. Because sometimes they put animals over humans. Right? So, Amen. And, and that's not... <laughs> I mean, we are creatures like animals. That's true. Especially cats. I don't like that <laughs> um, We are creatures like animals, but we're unique. Because we're called to have dominion over the animals. And eat them. You want to eat a cat? We have dominion over the animals. <laughs> and to, we are made in the image of God. We're more than a mere creature or we are unlike the animals that we are uniquely made in God's image. And yes. he breathed. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Yes. He didn't do that to any of the other animals. Right. right. Exactly. He was a very special creation. Well, and then that goes even into further. Chapter 2 of Genesis kind of gives you more details on, on what God did specifically for, for man, for Adam, and then for Eve specifically. Yes, so that's even more specific. And man became a living nephesh. So we're patterned after God. We reflect him in many different ways. Okay, so what does it mean to be made in the image of God? I'll just throw that out. What does it mean? mean to be made in the image of God? We have some of his characteristics. Okay. We, like, well, we, we have emotions. We're able to think and reason. Make choices, uh, create, appreciate art. Um, yeah, lots of things involved. Yeah, there's there's not necessarily just one thing you can point. Well, this is what it means to be made in the image of God, or that's what it means. It's really hard because it, 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 the text doesn't really say. But when you look at how the things that we different things that we can do, all these different items that Michael just ran off, that's what it means to be made in God's image. We're not to live like beasts, then. But we should recognize that we are unique. And we have unique responsibility because we bear to the world, in the world that God has made, we are image bearers of God. Okay, another question. Man is given a similar command as the other creatures, though. What is that command? There's a similar command that we're given along with the other creatures. What is that command from the text? Again, we're looking at this text, specifically Genesis chapter 1. Multiply? Yes, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Amen. I try. Amen. <laughs> God desires that the whole earth be filled with creatures who reflect his glory. Um, so, the first command given to man is an important command. Don't, you should devote yourself to the multiplication of human life in the world. It's a great and glorious calling. We took that early. May I ask a question? I <laughs> only got one laugh out of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Couple Snickers, yes. What was the question? Even my mom didn't get that kind of <laughs> She was busy doing her quiet one. I'm oh. trying to figure out what, what he said. It's true that he commanded commanded us to be fruitful, not the plant. Mm -hmm. That he commanded to the animals? Yeah. Okay. Verse 22, God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters and the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Oh, okay. That's verse 22. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You don't think he's talking about now, you know that? In verse 22? Oh, 22, you're higher up. Okay, I'm looking down at verse 28. Yeah, I also think he's talking to mankind, not everyone. Man. I'm just saying. So you're saying that, that's what it like says. says. <laughs> so that each individual man, so when he tells, uh, I, don't, I won't go into it. So it's a great blessing and privilege for a husband and wife to devote themselves to obeying this command. 
we we took it right. Okay, so uh, Genesis 127, God created man in his own image, in the image of God who created him, male and female, he created them. Man was created by God as what? Yes. It's true, which we just looked at, but rulers. What? Rulers. No? Over three. From verse 27. The image of God. What's that? The image of God. Male and female. So, the creation of man, talk about God, excuse me, the creator's design, man was created male and female. It's by God's design and his purpose that there's two different genders. By his good design, some of us are men, some of us are women. Uh, your battery is low, let's make mom feel it. Do you have the battery from? Is it 9 volt? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's all I need to know. I'll be back. I turn it off then? No, I'll just keep going until he does it. It's going in and out. No, 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 no. over there. Oh, oh, right. Like when you wiggle around, you get somewhere where it gets I'm blocked. Just and, okay. <laughs> You can wiggle all the time anyway. I will. You um, do. And, and by the way, too, so, where was I? Oh, some of us are men, some of us are women. And what does it say in verse 31 when it says that God's created everything, especially if God created man in his image, male and female has created them, what does God say about what he made? He was very good. Very good. Very good. Tov ma'ov. Very good. He says, see how good I am? I created it. So this is by God's good design. It's not evolution. It's not by chance. Notice, this is pushing us back to this. To understand anything correctly, we must first come to terms with the creator. This is how he's made things. Stand by, please. Intermission. Intermission. Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> 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 Something funny. I don't remember how it came out. Okay, I see the light comes on. That way it is. Alright. When the cover closes, you're done. Okay, intermission's over. Thank you. <laughs> um. Not everyone sees male and female distinctions as something that's good. Okay. Uh, some people believe that maleness and femaleness should be minimized. Male characteristics should be avoided. Female characteristics avoided. Uh, some believe masculinity, feminine, femininity should be downplayed, removed from our world as much as possible. There's a word for that. Let's see if I'm saying it right. Androgyny? I'm saying Androgyny. That. Androgynous or androgyny. Um, what it means is you're, you're downplaying, trying to mail almost like a third option between the sharp distinction between male and female. Um, uh, uh, certain friends in our advertising fashions encourage androgynous, androgynous way of thinking, blending masculinity and femininity. Um, yes. oh. So let me ask you, how do girls, females, wrongly adopt maleness in their dress, speech, behavior, manner? How do they do that? How have you seen? Pants and t-shirts. Okay, pants and t-shirts. Uh, A haircut like yours. Yeah, really, really short haircut, okay. I mean, like really, really, really short. Mm -hmm. But now these days, men wear long hair, longer than women. She's talking about women. Well, I'm talking about, well it can be men too. Uh, how do men adopt, wrongly adopt 
uh, femaleness, femininity in their dress, speech, behavior, and manners. They wear dresses and female underwear. Okay. They wear. They will wear female clothes. Uh, females will wear manly type clothes. Mm -hmm. And men will carry purses today when that was seen as only a woman's thing mm -hmm. not so long ago. Yeah. Those are man bags. Yeah, they don't call them purses. <laughs> what did you say? Those are man bags. You talk about yeah, those are man bags. That's a man purse. That's part of the deal, though. They're trying to make it, you know. Man bag, and then it's going to be something closer and closer. Next thing you know, it'll be worse. Now, you've been talking about dress, speech. Oh. Speech? Women can out curse Perfect. men, yeah. Was it we say to curse them? Yeah. Yes. The foul mouth. Oh, yeah, some women have a mouth. Yes. Behavior? They see that female violence is becoming more prominent. They're killing more and just getting more fights instead of more violent fights. You know how women used to pull hair and stuff, they're doing way worse now. And now everybody's got guns and knives. Um, and in our occupations, it's really prevalent. Yeah. Ah, occupation. Mm -hmm. and sports. Sports. Like the race in Alaska, that flood race where they got a woman in. Oh, I did right? Yeah, but that does them all. I just want to make sure that they show the world that they're better, as good as the male gender. Mm -hmm. Military, you know. Equal. Military, yeah. I can, I can be in combat just as any guy can be in combat. Mm -hmm. I was going to save this for, for uh, the end, but I think I'm going to do, read this to you now. The Department of Justice is ripped for making transgender restroom use new front in civil rights battle. Listen, the U.S. Department of Justice's latest cause, fighting for a transgender California ninth grader's right to use the boys' room at school, has conservative groups wondering just how far Washington will go in the name of civil rights. The student was born a girl, but has identified as a boy from a young age, according to the Department of Justice, which reached a settlement with the public school district in Arcadia. Under the deal, the district must not only change the student's restroom privileges and make similar accommodations on overnight trips, it must also institute a host of measures to ensure transgender students are treated as whatever gender they consider themselves to be. According to a Department of Justice report, the student began her gender transition from female to male during fifth grade after being teased and socially ostracized at school and on a school camping trip. After spring vacation, she adopted a male name and began wearing masculine clothing and teachers and classmates were told to use masculine pronouns in reference to her. She also used a gender-neutral bathroom for the remainder of the school year, according to the report. In the years that followed, the student's parents repeatedly tried to get this district to allow the student to use male-designated facilities. But the school refused, citing safety and privacy concerns. Stating that she could use the private restroom in the nurse's office, the child was reportedly frustrated with this arrangement. The school denied a 2011 request from the student's parents to allow her to share a cabin with several boys during a school trip. They filed a complaint with the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division. Found this article this past week, and I went, that, that goes exactly with what we're talking about. It, it goes even farther because then anybody can claim themselves to be anything, and then it doesn't really matter. We realize that. At one time, that would be shameful if you try to. <laughs> yes. I don't remember, but the study going through it, the study, I think it's towards later on when, it's, when the book gets into it, it talks about another group or another, some parents that are. Named their child 
a neutral name and are not allowing the child to do anything male or female and choose their own, even to the paparazzi they, or you know, anybody else, they don't tell the, pre, the people what the gender is of, and they let the child decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, California. We had, this is in Phoenix, we had a country day school down there. We went on an activity and this young kid was calling his dad, called his dad by his name. He didn't call him dad, he called him Bob or Bill or whatever it was. That was weird. Been, he'd been doing it for years. It's just really sad. There's distinctions, and God did this on purpose. You know, remember, this, this really goes back to what we talked about here, this first part. We must come to terms with the Creator. This is how God created things. This is how God did things. I think that Travis is out there checking it out. Probably your own class. They're everywhere. Looking at the opening chapter of Genesis, it tells us there's significant distinctions that we must maintain. Significant distinctions. What are the three significant distinctions that you see from the text? Three distinctions that we see. In, in Genesis chapter 1, really, there's, there's three distinctions that you see. We've already looked at one. What's, what's the first one that we just looked at? The two distinctions. Male and female is the first distinction. What's another distinction? Animals? Yes, animals versus humans. That's the second distinction. And then what's the biggest distinct, distinction? Our creator and image of God. Well, no, that's not a distinction, but, but that's what we have been. So you have male and female distinction. Not God. Yes, we're not God. So creator and creation. You okay? <laughs> The street. There's, a, there's an adult with them, and I said, uh, you're yeah, I said, you're welcome to join us, but I said, right now we're having class, and you know, the commotion <laughs> outside is taking away, I said, but you're welcome to join us, and he's like, uh, they just asked me to come on a walk with them, <laughs> and so he's like, okay, let's get out of here, guys. <laughs> so, that happens. Do I, I go over to the other class to put me in? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they wanted to come in. Yeah. <laughs> no. When I said that, he looked at me like, uh, how can I get out of this? <laughs> no, I'm just on a walk with the kids. <laughs> I, I told him several times, even when the kids came around. Did I you tell them we eat animals? <laughs> no, they two dogs. <laughs> Big dogs, man, they're huge. So we have creator and creation, or creator and creature. Second distinction is humans, may, uh, excuse me, man and animals, humans and animals, Third distinction, male and female. Those are important distinctions we have to understand. And they're good distinctions. They're truthful distinctions. Again, notice how this goes right back here to this main foundation. We must come to terms with how God has done things. This is how God has created things. This is how God has done things. For his creation, he decided to make man in his image, and he decided to make man male and female. Okay, so, what are the differences between male and female? First one is biological, right? You know, yeah. kind of figure that out. But it's not just, I mean, those are obvious physical distinctions and differences between men and women. But there's more than that. Here, I'll write these down for you. Uh, major physiological differences. Um, metabolic rate. Body fat ratio. Muscle mass ratio. This one right here. Um, this whole discussion that's coming up 
uh, with different uh, writers that women can now be in the military, like in combat. What does it start with? Uh, muscle mass ratio. Uh, they can be in combat with uh, uh, with other soldiers, and this, uh, another soldier brought up there is no way that a hundred 120 pound female will be able to carry a guy who weighs as much, if not more, than her when he gets shot or something were to happen. There's just no way that that's going to happen. They, they do not have that muscle mass. One, one interesting thing, like we go back to occupations, uh, that's very apparent is in the fire department. Yes. The fire department has had standards for years that you have to be able to do these things in order to be a firefighter. We expect you to be able to do that. And in order to allow the women to compete with the men, they drop the standards. Right. It did in the service, too. Yeah? Oh, certainly. So women and I can be a firefighter? Oh, yeah, yeah they can be. Well, women can't hear, carry all that equipment up the stairs and carry people down the stairs, and so they just drop the standards on that. Yeah, these are differences. Sometimes that does happen, uh -huh. but, she's, but it's, it's, it's rare. rare. It's, it's more rare. How many right. women do I know I know right. who like that? <coughs> between men and women, uh, what are women capable of doing that men will never be able to do? Have babies. Exactly. <laughs> Have Thank a womb. you. Yes, that's when I say, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should praise the Lord. I, I, I mean, it's amazing. What amazes me is I didn't know this, so I'm learning this from my wife. This is for free. Uh, women, your, your abdomen splits. When you get, get pregnant, I didn't know this. Your abdomen splits like that, and then it, it goes back. To, oh, thank you. I'm just like, wow. That's, I never knew that. Anyway, uh, men are never given the work of carrying babies in the womb, giving birth, nurturing children in the same way that women are. Now, notice when you look at these things, people automatically, oh, that's, oh, 
I just come up. Why is that such a bad thing to say, hey, this is great. You can do this, but I can do that. I can't do those things that Judy can do. Judy can do things that I can do. Why is that so bad? Yeah. It isn't bad. It isn't. Oh, it should wow. be celebrated. It should work and affirmed. We should complement each other. That's what it's meant to do. Satan wants to destroy the family. I want to understand why do you want to be like man? Men are men, women are women. They yeah. differ from each other. Yeah. Praise God. Why? Why? Because it's, it's part of the lie. Uh, but yeah. there is that thing that the fault. The women will want to be like the man. Well, the the the, the mentality. The nuance from the text is, um, and see, we see that. We're talking about this cultural thing with women wanting to be, do all the things men can do and be equal with men. And, and you know, it's not the other way around so much. It, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. The, the, what the text is trying to show is that in our fallenness, within the marriage relationship, the woman will will want to dominate. Yes. And, but he shall rule over you. Excuse me, so the women want to dominate, so what will happen? The man will have a submissive role. That's one distortion. And then you have the opposite distortion. And he will rule over you. He will be harsh. There's the other distortion. Where he's harsh and strong, does that. So the one distortion, I'm going to be in control. You and then the other, okay. That distortion, and the other distortion is I'm gonna be in charge of you, and he will rule over you. Those, those are the distortions that you find from our fallenness. Whereas it's not meant to be like that. The, the man is meant to give leadership and give loving leadership, and the woman is called to compliment him and to help him. So but it's part of the lie, it's, it's why it's like that, because it goes back to this. God screwed things up. You, you should have been a female. You, sh you should have been a male. That, that's, see, that's what's happening. It's questioning that. So we're going into the differences here. Here you go. Here's some more differences between men and women. Men go to lunch to discuss a project or business goal. Uh, they have a problem to solve. Women, they go to lunch is an opportunity to nurture a relationship. Uh, giving support to, receiving support from a friend. Guys, we don't really do that. <laughs> When a man gets upset, he becomes very quiet, mulling over his problem to find a solution. Women generally talk about the problems to feel better. Amen. Well, guys, like, why are you talking? <laughs> Fix it. Um, women are out. Women are out. They have to go to the bathroom. What do you do? Want to go to the bathroom with me? <laughs> Uh, except for the one time Travis asked me. <laughs> do, you, do you ever want to go to the bathroom thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't see guys doing that. No, we don't do that. No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, another girls prefer dolls, set tea sets, versus trucks and toy guns. If you give a girl trucks, she gives them a name, cares for them. Give a boy a truck, he crashes them. <laughs> give him a doll, he tears it apart. Yeah, like that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now again, some of these. It's not always the case, but that's usually the case. You see the differences. Um, so, so again, I want to go back to that verse there in verse 31. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It's very good. We were just talking about just a moment ago about the lie. Our culture wants to affirm, they want to celebrate gender oneness. No, we want to celebrate gender diversity. This is a good thing. Our culture wants to celebrate total diversity, though, too. How do they want to celebrate total diversity? Total diversity. In what way do, would they want to celebrate total diversity? Everything goes. They can all do everything. Everything must be accepted by everybody else. Total diversity. Complete diversity with 
gays, lesbians, transgender, bisexual. That's total diversity. We don't celebrate that type of diversity. We celebrate oneness in how God's made us. But we celebrate diversity in the sense that there's males and there's females. God's made men to be men, women to be women, and we're supposed to come together and complement one another. Very great. Very nice. That should be affirmed. We should be celebrated. Maleness, maleness and femaleness is a good thing. It is very good that God has made male and female, and that men and women are able to complement each other in such a way to help each other fulfill the purpose for which we're created. That's a good thing. Our gender is a part of how God created us. How God's created you to be you, be female, be male, that's a good thing. That's how he wanted it to be. Other thoughts, questions, comments on this that we've gone through so far? And just, uh, you're talking about a perfect marriage when you're talking the way God wants us to live our lives. Because we accept each other. Maybe not necessarily a perfect marriage, but a marriage where you're constantly reminding yourself this is the role that God has had. That's me. Right. And in order to know that role, you got to read the gospel. you got to read it, got to know it. it, it practice. Redemption. Redemption comes into play in this. When you really begin to when you understand the gospel and you embrace Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, you will really begin to understand who you are and how God's made you to be. Regeneration. Who's that? Regeneration. Yes, that needs to happen. And then you can see things with new glasses. That's a good point, Jim. thoughts or comments. You can see why um, this, is, this is important for us to go through in the adult class. You can see why uh, how we as your elders saw how very important it was to go through this um, with the youth, with our students. Mm -hmm. Because it's the students, or Michael, if you're still in that age range, it's, it's those that are in their teens and their 20s. This is all being questioned. Mm -hmm. This is all being questioned. You know, the whole school system, everybody around them, mm -hmm. I think I think the questioning phase is over in our culture. Mm -hmm. It is now being, you know, what you're teaching first. here, oh, yeah, and what we're showing as being the opposite is what in our culture is being rejected. Well, yeah, the opposite is being taught. Yes. Yeah, it's not even a question anymore. It's like, this is right. This is what it is. within this within this building but once you go out you don't say any of that stuff you keep it to yourself and that's that's where it will begin and then it will move into actually you can't say it in the building well in the gay marriage thing 
they're going to start, yeah, eventually I think what we're going to see is it's going to be you, you will refuse to do gay marriage. And that's, they're going to, first thing you're going to do is start taking away your tax exemption. Yeah. Which, it's going to start. Which, quite honestly, well, I, I'm fine with that. I yeah. Mean, I'd say take away everybody's tax exemptions for everything. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> so, cool. why, why is there tax exemptions anyway? That's, then you get <laughs> what is so wonderful about being a female? What's so wonderful about being a female? Wonderful. Oh, that we can have children. Have children. children. Yeah. What else? What's so wonderful? I mean, I don't have anything, any answers you're supposed to answer. I just have to question. I don't. I don't within us uh -huh. for caring for others. That's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Your wife would be the best one around here to answer that. I think any female can answer that. Yeah, but your wife is. Let's, let's see, what is Karen think? What's so wonderful about being female? Yeah, she knows Chris. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what would Karen say? It's so wonderful to be a female. I think we have more ability to be patient than we men do. Think so? That comes with, <laughs> it comes with <laughs> dealing with children. That's the start. And also, we can wear high heels, we can wear makeup, you know, we can dress up. Me the men can do that too. Yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> do. They can support their husbands. That's one of the joys of a godly woman. That's true. That's true. I know Karen does it and Chris does it for sure. What more can you as a woman do to encourage this in yourself and in others? That's probably the harder question. What more can you do to encourage this in yourself and in others? Also, when a when a wife is submissive to the husband, and and he's gentle and loving with her, and together they work together, and they set an example to their kids. That's a really a plus. So you can encourage this in yourself or in others. Um, it's not just for ladies. Uh, 
a book called Women's Ministry in the Local Church. Um, what's his name, Charlie? In Jacksonville, Florida. We saw him on the plane. We were going together for the gospel. Because you asked. Ligon Duncan? Thank you. Duncan, Duncan, Duncan. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know he was in Jacksonville. You know, but there's another, there's a female who writes along with him on this book. Um, I'm, I'm reading this book. I'm about halfway, a little over halfway done. It's a great book about women's mission, local church, what women can do and how they're instrumental, really, in a local church. And one of those aspects, Judy mentioned it, is being nurturing. That's a very important aspect that female, females can bring into a local church setting is that nurturing aspect. I would encourage you, it's, 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 it's a thin little book, it's like that thin, it's not, I like anything, I don't know, it's like maybe 150 pages, something like that, 175. So. Women's Mission of Local Church, Ligon Duncan, if you Google that or do Amazon. That's not to say that Women's Ministry is small. No. I don't think you have to read some huge yeah. volumes of theology books. Yeah. They don't have the muscle mass. They can't carry around the big yeah, books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For us, men, what's so great about being a male? We don't have to give birth. That's number one. Well, it kind of, see, I kept trying to think of which way you were asking that. Are you talking about yeah. being a man distinct from being a woman or because I like the answer he gave too it's just being a man or being a woman just just being comfortable and, and thankful and praising God for that role that he's given so do you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. oh, I understand it can be in reference to in, in contrast to a female but it's just also I don't know how you would answer that in reference to not being in contrast to a female because we're different yeah. I guess just being comfortable in that role. Because obviously some people aren't. But what's so great about being that role? What's so great about being a man? One is being a provider and your wife not having to work outside the home. In this church, most of the married people in our church are that way. And in most churches, they're not. A provider? Okay. It's a shared thing. They're buried in bed. And it's, it's yeah, and now women work. Like in the Bank of America, it's only one male there. When I saw all female, you know, in the staff, yeah. and I said, oh, that's sad. I think all those answers, that sometimes it's great, and other times it can be a, a burden. That's sometimes. One way. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's great being a provider in this net, whatever, but at times, I mean, it's not so great. <laughs> Especially when the economy tanks. Yeah. Did it do that? And I don't, I don't necessarily, <laughs> yes. you know, when I looked at this question, I kind of, I asked myself the same question. What is so great about being a male? I, I thought about that. I don't have to. It's hard to answer. Give birth to children. You, but, um, not that there wouldn't be anything great to that, but that's just nothing that appeals to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a pretty great thing. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I, mean it, it's, I think it's great that women can have that. Um, closeness with their child. I think that's one thing that men don't have, but it, it, it definitely brings women closer to the children and uh, for, for purposes, you know, that God created. I mean, so that they can nurture, they can care, I can, they can raise. Drive them all farther off the tee. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I have something to reference that. Yeah, thank you. I did, he brought me thinking, a woman brings a nurturing aspect to the children, right. but the male Seems like my dad was the solid rock of our family. He brings stability and stuff like that to the children, and they're both equally important. I was just—I was just going to say that because in reference to the kids, you know, they're doing this, doing this. I come in, knock it off. You do this. You go. You go. Bam! It happens. That's what I like about. Be a man because there's more nurturing, you know, with the female stuff like that. I don't put up with anything. I'm just like you, knock it off. I'm not listening to you. Bang. You, what are you crying about? Stop crying. <laughs> you know, Isaiah, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Has any stop crime? What are you crying for? No, you don't fucking cry. Just do this. I mean, it's just it's logic. So but everything. Kid was getting all upset. He was crying because he couldn't with the brakes on. I think we took him outside Friday. I'm like, what are you crying for? Then stop crying. There's no need. It's just <laughs> jumping in. And he figured it out. It's like, oh, okay. You'll, you'll see the children respond differently to the. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, my daughter will try to negotiate with my wife and the center and kind of just stall and whatever, and all I gotta do is just give her a look. Yeah. And I don't get any of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not asking that question. It's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do like that. But I feel like that in men, especially, I don't know how to feel about women, but in men, but I think it can also build up our pride, though, because we, we feel masculine. We feel, because we like that feeling. We like that feeling of being and being the strong one and being the support, you know, the, 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 the uh, breadwinner. And we like all that stuff, so it can definitely be uh, our downfall as well. Well, and I'm not saying there's not downfalls to those things, but yeah. what? <coughs> um, because there's downfalls on both sides. Yeah. And they can be too nurturing and end up, you know, being too emotional and things. And they can be too strong, you know. So there's that, that happens. Yes. Balance. But, but there's, there's, there's a balance. Stand by, stand by, stand by. But what the, the question is how we can, I mean, what's so great about being a male? And there's some good things. There's some good things about the fact that we're, we're stronger. I mean, we, we are stronger in terms of our physique. And we can do more things and pick up this stuff and everything. That's a good thing. Now, it can be taken to an extreme. And there's that's our um, tendency to sin, yes. And I'm not saying that you're wrong in that. Um, I agree. Yeah, but, but and I agree with you when you're starting. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord. You started when they were born to develop that respect for authority, and when they are in church, they'll make a noise. They can sit on a blanket and they'll be quiet and have a good time. Whereas if your kid is just left to themselves, it's all about them. They're totally spoiled. With nine kids, you'd have a zoo if you hadn't done that. Yeah, there's been my house. I mean, there are times, I understand it, but if you say something, if you whistle, it's over. They respond to your authority. Yeah, I don't care if you don't like me. Not quite. Like when Isaiah was a baby, uh, you would be up there in the pulpit in the evening service and preaching, and Isaiah would start, you know, like crying and everything, and you would say, you! And then he would stop crying. <laughs> and he was a baby. And then he learned to do that. If he would say something, he would go, <laughs> Just like Daddy, man. Yeah. So how can we encourage our time's gone? How can we encourage what, what more can we do to encourage us in ourselves, these good points, um, and in others? What more can we do? Is there anything more we can do? I, I really don't know the answer to that question. I, I had to think about that and even thinking through it. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's not necessary. Yeah, if we had a lot of new parents, you'd teach them opening a child's heart. You'd do that as a class. You would be investing in making a big difference in parents' lives. Mm -hmm. Now this you can do is we got a couple of just given books. Well, one of the things we're to do as Christians is to live what God's word says in the world. And I think that's the same thing. We need to live who we are as genders, as God. From God's word in the world. Uh, that's the biggest part about how we can you know, uh, show that to others. And, and it's just by, by being who we are, not trying to be somebody that we're not, or somebody that God did not make us to be. Let's get to when, when uh, it's wonderful being female. When females begin to close their Bible, does it come close? That means the preacher better be done. <laughs> <laughs> Notice that they're all. You said the key word. I didn't look at me with, you know, patiently, smiling. You got me done. Please go. I'm going to snack you. When your mom starts looking at me. Now she does this. Lord God, I thank you that we can go through this study, and I pray, Lord, that it would change all of our lives, um, that we would see all, all things, uh, even, uh, even ourselves, 